Perfect, and we are live. Just make sure the transcript is working. Awesome. Hello to everybody who's joining us for this exciting event. Um, we're going to wait a couple minutes just for people to trickle in and then we'll be getting started.
Okay, I think we're going to get started. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to Creating Coupon, a quantum journey, um, an IBM workshop presented by IBM. Um, we are really, really thrilled to be collaborating with IBM over the course of this hackathon. Um, and today we'll be hearing, um, we'll be hearing from Junye Huang about his personal journey through the field of quantum computing and also how he came about creating um, the game Coupon. Um, in just a second, I'll hand it over to Junye so we can get started. And then afterwards, we'll do a brief Q&A. Um, if during the course of the tutorial, you have any questions, please post them in the Twitch chat and I will bring up any unresolved questions at the end. Um, I'm also going to quickly um, be posting Junye's slides in the Twitch chat um, so that everyone can follow along during the meeting. And um, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Junye Huang. Um, Junye Huang is a quantum developer advocate at IBM. He is part of the Qiskit community team whose mission is building an open, diverse, and inclusive quantum community. He is focusing on promoting quantum education in the Asia-Pacific Asia region. He organized the first Qiskit University hackathon in the world and is a guest lecturer for two quantum computing courses at National University of Singapore. In addition, he is supporting regional and global educational initiatives such as the IBM Quantum Challenge and the Qiskit Global Summer School. His passion for quantum computers drives him to create educational games for quantum computers such as QPong, a quantum version of Pong which he created at the first Qiskit camp. QPong was subsequently ported to a physical quantum arcade machine and toured around Europe, including the EU quantum flagship event in Helsinki in October 2019. Please welcome me in, uh, please um, wel welcome, or join me in welcoming Junye. Hey, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm really thrilled to be here and talking to so many enthusiastic uh, people like you guys to join this uh, week's pre-hackathon bootcamp and as well as next week's hackathon. So just uh, give me a second to bring up the slide and also try to share a few different applications later. I will uh, just give me a second. Okay. Um, all right. Do you see the slide? Let me bring it up full screen. Okay, let me go back to the beginning. Okay, do you see the screen making coupon? Yeah, perfect. So thank you. Uh, yeah, so today's talk, I'm going to talk about my journey of making coupon and how I lead into quantum industry now working as a quantum developer advocate in, in IBM Quantum. So uh, Nikki already gave me a brief introduction so I won't spend too much time. So briefly, I'm a quantum developer advocate in IBM Quantum. What I do is to promote quantum education in the Kiskit community and specifically I'm based in Singapore. So I focus on the Asia Pacific uh, region. And I was participant of the first Kiskit camp and after that, I also organized the first university hackathon in Singapore, uh, which was the first one organized by a university, not by IBM in the world. And I also like making games. So these are a few games that I was involved in, and we will talk a few of them today, including the Cubone and various version of Cubone. So today we have one hour. So I briefly divided this into two parts. So the first part will be more focusing on like a hands-on uh, workshop style showing you how Cubone was made and this various version of Cubone and showing you different ways of making games on quantum computer or games on quantum simulators. And then in the second part, I will talk about how Cubone led me to this job right now. I'm doing quantum developer advocate and hopefully uh, you may learn some tips from the my personal journey and then uh, you can also lead to your own personal journey into the quantum industry. And at last, if we have time, we can uh, take some questions or in between, you can also leave your questions on Twitch and then uh, Nick Hill will read it out to me. Maybe in the after the first part, we can answer some questions for two minutes. And then the second part, we can have the question in the remaining part. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so to start, uh, 
So the first part is about the game coupon or about making quantum games. Uh, I got some hints from our internal source that uh, in this hackathon, we are going to have some kind of creative challenge. So uh, I hope this first part will be giving you some tools and example that you will be able to follow to making something really cool during the hackathon. Um, so the coupon is a quantum reimagination of the classical pawn game. Is there any question? Okay, uh, it's a quantum reimagination of the classical pawn game. So this is really using a explore unfamiliar concept like quantum building and specifically coupon is really good in explaining uh, superposition. In a very familiar setting, a pawn game, which I hope probably mo most of you have played in uh, some time in your life. And this is a really old style, uh, old school classical computer game that's I think started in 1970s. So it's just very simple that you have two pedals and a little ball bouncing between you and your components. So uh, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to try to show you uh, in a live demo how the game works and explain to you how it was made. Uh, let me bring up my VS Code. This version. Um, yeah. Let me see. I hope I'm sharing the correct version. Yeah. You see a coupon code, right? So if you actually, if you go back here, you click to a GitHub, you'll be see, they will see on GitHub the source code of coupon, and you can just download the code, just like usually how you download or clone the GitHub repo. And then after downloading, you can open using VS Code or any text editor or uh, Python IDE or a terminal. You'll be able to see uh, a lot of files and we just need to run Python main.py. Of course, you will need to install some packages if there's some warning, but uh, usually it should be fine if you have this Pygame module and Qiskit, you require Qiskit. So it takes maybe a uh, few seconds to load. And I will need to share the screen as well. Mm. Okay. Uh, do you see the coupon game screen? Yes. So this was the original coupon made in the Kissy Cam with some uh, improvement after the hackathon. So if you can choose a difficult level. So uh, for the, for this talk, I'm just going to choose easy. So it's easier for me to explain. So it's very basic. Like I can explain that you have like this, you have the computer, which is your opponent. And like I say, represent classic computer. And on the right is a quantum computer that is controlled by you. Uh, and in below you see uh, something called circuit composer, which you might be familiar on IBM quantum uh, experience, there's also a circuit composer that you can construct a quantum circuit. So right now I don't have anything in my circuit. So on the right hand side, you can see the pedal actually is determined by the quantum state of the quantum circuit. Right now we don't have anything. And by default, the qubits are initialized at zero. So three qubits, zero, zero, zero. So the pedal is in this position. So if I just press uh, X, then you will flip the qubit from zero to one and it will change to zero, zero, one. And if I move down, it will just change to zero, one, one. So this is very, just very simple thing. If you just place X gate, then it's ordinary, very classical. So nothing is very fancy about this. And I'm very lost <laughs> because I talk too slowly. Um, but if you put something like Halama gate, then it becomes interesting because the pedal actually become bigger uh, because of now you have a superposition between 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1. But once the ball comes to here, it will trigger a, a measurement, which actually collapse your superposed uh, paddles. And you have a random chance of 50% going to 0, 0, 0, 50% chance of 0, 0, 1. And we got lucky, we just bounced back the ball. And so this become a very interesting uh, strategy that because if you choose other difficulty level, the ball may go too fast. Then you might want to think uh, to put how many Halama gates. If you put more Halama gates, the pedal become bigger. So you might be able to catch it easier. 
but uh, you also have lower chances of for each one of them to to get uh, measured. So then it becomes very interesting. You can also uh, have more advanced thing like uh, rotational gates and stuff, but usually uh, X gate, Harlamma gate is enough. So you can see the probability of the paddle is shown by the transparency of the of the paddle. So you can see uh, now if it comes to here, it will be very low chance of getting hit. So so that's the basic idea of coupon. You have the classical game that is on the top, uh, and on the bottom is a quantum circuit. And on the right, the, the player, you are helping the quantum computer, a wave three qubit um, primitive quantum computer, and you help them to achieve uh, quantum supremacy or quantum advantage. If you beat it, you'll see the winning screen of saying, uh, you achieved the quantum advantage for the first time in humanity. And that was before Google, <laughs> because it was 2019. So that was cool. Uh, and then, okay, you have seen the game. So I'm going to see you the, show you the code a little bit of how it is made. So you see that this have a past, classical game would be handled by a pie game and a game part. But below we have the circuit would be uh, simulated by Qiskit simulators. So let me go there. You can see the code, right? So uh, there's many different things, but mainly you can go to the main part. So there's a lot of details. I'm not going to really go into a line by line, but you can see that you need to have pi game, and there's a kind of standard setting that you need to set the pi game, initialize how you set the screen and things like that. And then the major part is that after you go to a main loop, uh, let me see. You will have, um, maybe it's better just go into somewhere. The core basically is a circuit grid model. In here, basically it's what created the below the circuit, circuit composer and how to translate what you see as images of individual gates and you will transfer to become an actual quantum circuit uh, object. And this one can be passed to, um, let me see where it is. You pass to the Kiski simulator, which is just directly here because we are using Pygame, which is in Python. Uh, I made this two years ago, so I kind of forget where it is. Um, yesterday, I saw. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't find exactly the part, but I can go back to the slide to show you. Basically, is uh, here. So you can see a classical paddle and quantum paddle and quantum circuit. A circuit composer is made by a quantum circuit. And before the measurement, the paddle is the quantum circuit is simulated by a state vector back end. Uh, so it's post the screen. You can see my slide, right? Okay. Um, so before the measurement, you get your superstition is, I mean, this quantum circuit is simulated by a state vector back end. So it gives you the whole state vector. And then you can in, in turn calculate the probability of appearing in uh, the different positions. But if you have, um, let me see, I feel I'm... okay. If you are, if after the measurement, you'll be collapsed, and that is trying to simulate the actual quantum computer, which use a calcium simulator in Kiskit. So after you do this, you do a measurement, you will only give you one outcome because we are doing a one shot measurement. So that's basically the nutshell of how you make a coupon game. You need to have some game engine to run the game, have this uh, handling the paddle and the collision, but the quantum part is handled by Kiskit. And so there's many ways of making quantum games and there's many game engines. And if you know how to make games, you know Python is not the best language of making games because the game engines are pretty, pretty not developed. 
So these are a few examples of game engine in Python. So because it's in Python, you can just use direct library imports integrated it with Qiskit. That is the most straightforward way to making a uh, quantum game. But because they are not very mature uh, game engine, you, so the game that you make will be quite primitive, like Coupon, it looks like really old style. If you want to make more uh, fancy or uh, more realistic or more like your mobile phone game or the AAA game, then you need a real game engine like Unity or Godot or some other more interesting engine and in various languages. And there's two ways that you can make this kind of uh, game if you are not using Python because Qiskit is only in Python. So two ways to make it is to build a Flux server, which is a Python based uh, HTTP server, very simple thing that you can write it and you can run it locally or host it on the cloud. And in your game, you can make some HTTP request and talk to this server. For example, uh, I'll show you later that I have a Unity version of Coupon that how you can do the same thing, but you send to a Python server and then the Qiskit in Python is going to simulate everything and return the result back to the game. This alternative to make this is to use something called micro Qiskit. It's uh, basically a very minimal implementation of Qiskit in various, various languages. I think include uh, C Sharp Lua and C++. And so you can see, go to C in this link. You already have my slide. So, uh, so in this next uh, 10 minutes or so, I'm going to show you very quickly uh, these two version, Coupon Unity and Coupon Pico 8 and how they are made. So yeah, I'm going to go out of my screen. Let me bring up my second one is Unity. So the, okay, yeah, we can directly go to the link. Um, yeah, so the Unity was make a version because we have uh, later have a project to make a physical arcade machine as Nikhil uh, introduced and it went on to a tour in Europe. So because it's an arcade machine, we wanted to remake Coupon to a more, uh, yeah, just a full-fledged game. So we wrote it in Unity, which is a commercial, can be make commercial games. And we wrote it in three months. And you can see if you go to this web page in GitHub, you can download. And these are already prepared, so you don't need to own Unity to, to be able to run them. So you can just download any one that is in your uh, operating system and you can run it. So I already have one on my computer, so I'm going to bring it up. Yeah. So, so you see, I already started the game. Maybe I can exit and we run it. Okay. Sorry, it's a bit a little back and forth of sharing screen. Uh, so this is the loading screen of Coupon Unity or Coupon Archive version. So uh, yeah, yeah, we also have the high score. Let me try to see where I started. So yeah, this is the start screen, and you can see that the circuit below is simplified. We want to make it vertical, so below there's not much space. And we also realized that there's not much you can, um, you really need to be on just one layer of circuit. So we simplify the three, one. And you see below there's nothing yet. Uh, and it still bounces back because it's not, this is not a bug, it's just because uh, this doesn't have keys. So we need to run a server first. So let me run a server at the back end and you'll be able to see after I run the back end and start the game again, then you'll be able to see the same thing that was as like the Python version. Okay, I hope this time it works. Let's see. 
Yeah, so now you see that it appears. And it might be a bit slow because it's talking to a server. Hmm. <laughs> like lifetime will always have problem. Um, it was working fine, let's say. Um, yeah, but basically if it runs very perfectly, you will see that it works in the same way as the, in the Python version, but because it's, it's a separate application hosting the case kit, so they might have latencies. Uh, so this is something you need to consider. But if you're running a local machine, you shouldn't have much latency. But if you want to host it in the cloud, uh, the type of game you may, may have to be limited to something that less, uh, less fast, like coupon might be a bit fast, but there's other game that you can make is uh, maybe a strategy game of um, puzzle game, then you don't really need to have, uh, you don't worry so much about the latency. And then, the, yeah, I think I only have four minutes to talk, then I can go straight to the next one, which is just the PicoA version. So the Pico A version was made actually last year and when I was trying to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of uh, Game Boy. And I really wanted to make a Game Boy version of Cubone because I really love games. But uh, making Cubone, uh, Game Boy games are really difficult. Uh, it's a really old hardware. It requires mostly at least C and a lot of people write it in uh, assembly. Uh, so I couldn't learn it in time to make it to meet the 30 years anniversary. But I have something uh, very cool called Game Shell, as you can see. Oh, I have a virtual screen, so you can really see. <laughs> um, which is a uh, look like Game Boy, and it can run uh, some like Linux system that it can host a game engine called Pico 8. That is kind of like a virtual uh, retro game engine. So I can make some game that looks like Game Boy. So you can see in GitHub as well, it's very simple. Uh, you only have like code, one line of code. I'm going to show you and bring up the, the, the game itself. So let's see. So hopefully you can see this screen. So you have a coupon, which is running on a Pico 8 simulator. And I make it to be like this because of how, that's how, uh, Game Boy looks like the color. And then, okay. For some reason, you always have problem. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so now you can see that this is a Pico A version of a coupon. It works in the same way very much. Uh, you can put Hadama gate. And just a bit slower, and uh, that the screen resolution is lower, but it has kind of a cool and cute uh, retro feeling to it. And the way this is made is different from the different from the different from the Unity version because it uses a micro kit, which is already implemented in Lua, which is the language Pico A uses. So if you open the source code, you will see that uh, you have some part of a math and then below there's a micro Kiskit Lua. And you see you implement a familiar quantum circuit object and it can simulate and it support gates like root RX, RZ, RX, uh, RY, measure, control X, Alma again, all this gate that hope should be enough for you to make any kind of quantum game. So you can just copy this code. Uh, and then you will be able to uh, run it on your, in, include it in your, in your people again, or any other game engine that you might need to. So let me yeah, go back to my presentation. Sorry about that demo, always have problem. Uh, uh, I think now is good time, half points. So this is the first part I wanted to talk about where various ways of making quantum game and using coupon as example from the original version Python Pygame and 
then Unity which uses C sharp and Pico it used to Lua. And there's three different ways to make it. Um, okay. These three different ways you can direct library uh, import using a flux server or you can micro CC. So hopefully this tool and example can help you for the hackathon later on this weekend. Okay. I think we can pause here to answer some questions if there is any. Yes, yeah, definitely. There, um, people have been um, at, um, as, asking for the GitHub links, which I've been putting in the chat, and then okay, there's perfect. some questions about the, um, the game as well. Um, so one person asked, uh, just kind of like, what gave you the idea to make this game initially, and how long did the original version take to code? Actually, I didn't have this idea. The idea came from my mentor for the hackathon, which is, uh, I will show you his picture later on. We have a team of three people. And so it was a hackathon. Maybe it's okay to bring up the next one. Uh, let me just keep all this. You, you assume you don't see this thing first, I'll show you later. Uh, but it was a Kiski camp. Uh, it was in March, 2019. It was, uh, at the time it was proof COVID, so we could still do physical events, gather together. And it was a few days ago went first, we were in a IBM Research Center in Yorktown in New York. And then we have some tutorial workshop, just like now, the first week, uh, the first few days is for like learning new skills, learning different examples of uh, doing hackathon projects. And then we moved to somewhere in Vermont in, uh, yeah, when north in US that is really cold and full of snow at the time is crazy. Uh, minus uh, 20 degrees Celsius uh, outside, really cold. So you want to stay in the door and just keep hacking. <laughs> so we have this, uh, these are my teammates and you can see we have this gamepad. So the ideas came from my mentor. You can see here, he's James Weaver. Now he's my colleague. We work in the same team now. Uh, so he's a very, uh, experienced quantum developer advocate. And so that's the idea has just come from him. I, I should ask him how he has this idea and how he have the idea of making a quantum version of quantum and also have the idea of how, which part is quantum, like using the quantum circuit to denote the location of the, of the pedal. So these ideas all come from him. And how long it took to grow, it was two, less than 24 hours to attend the hackathon. And so, yeah, I think it was a pretty fun uh, experience because I didn't know Kiss Kid before the hackathon and I didn't know how to make a game before the hackathon. So I think we learned quite a lot, but this is not a version that was completed in, uh, in the hackathon. If you go to a GitHub, you can see the different version. In the hackathon version is uh, very cranky, uh, a lot of bugs. After the hackathon, I spent a week to polish it and, uh, and to make it a bit nicer. Okay, uh, is there and, more questions? Yeah, um, and, and, and just for all of you watching, let this um, in, inspire you to create something awesome this weekend as in, yeah. and as proof of what you can do in 24 hours. Um, <laughs> yeah, there, there are a couple other questions in the chat. There's a couple about the game mechanics specifically. Um, one person was asking, so like when you make the paddle bigger by applying the Hadamard gate, um, is the function like collapsed only when the ball comes through some threshold? Yeah, so actually we have some imaginary barrier or I don't remember it was a physical object or just a value in the screen. Uh, mm -hmm. Somewhere that when it's closer to the paddle, not exactly in the paddle, you see there's some small distance here that yeah. will trigger the measurement. It's just some code that you say when the balls reach this position and then you you change the simulating backend from a state vector backend, we show you the transparency and probability to a calcium simulator that, and one shot. If you do one shot, then you only have one outcome. Then you use that outcome to determine the position of the paddle and use that as a collision detection so that only that one after measurement will be bouncing back. If the part that is not, then it won't be, you just go through. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, that makes sense. Um, any other questions right now before we move on? Let's see, there's there's one more here. I'm asking about the controls. Um, one person is asking, how um, how is the game controlled with arrow keys or are you adding in gates manually? Yeah, uh, yes, it's manual, but it's, you can use keyboard. Uh, depends on the game engine you use, you should 
you always support keyboard. Actually, original version support. We are using a gamepad if you see the photo, uh, because we want to show that it's uh, like really video game. Uh, so the, all the game engine will have module that you can specify the different kind of uh, different kind of inputs. So uh, or like the Pico Eight, you only have uh, two buttons. Uh, you don't see here. Oh, I I can't really see here because it's virtual background. Uh, <laughs> I should disable it. But basically, all the game engine will have ways that you can just control. Like here, also we we make some other thing to support this kind of arcade style controls. But if you make it on your computer, just support normal mouse mouse click or using keyboard. Very cool. Okay. Oh, and there's one more question here, which is. Um, is is uh, uh, someone's asking if, if you can get the the classical side and the quantum side to compete against each other? Yeah, that is actually a very popular request for me to like saying some people want to do some kind of like uh, machine learning training to 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 put two comp two machine learning model who can do a quantum side and the classical oh, side, wow. or <laughs> or people asking me to make a two player version, either two quantum or two, one classical one. Quantum. It can't be one classical one quantum because classical is easier to, to do. But people ask me to do like uh, two sides of a quantum circuit and two player playing. It. I wanted to do, but I yeah. If you want to do it, I, we can we can work together to expand it because now I don't have the motivation to to look at my old code and try to improve it and implement it. So, but that would be really cool. And if you can do it like uh, online, like the quantum chess, I think you had it last yesterday. Uh, they mm -hmm. have some very cool online competitions. If you can do some online coupon competition, it would be really good. Yeah, <laughs> definitely be awesome. Um, I think that's all the questions in our chat for okay. now. Though I'm sure more will come up during the second half. Yeah, sure. So I will set, uh, start the second part of the talk. So we already have, okay, 8.37, we have 20 minutes. So I go a bit faster in the second part. So if you, I wish to actually I can show you. So if you already have my slides. So there's a few other games that like you can you can see, such as this Kiski Blocks, which is a like a Minecraft game with some quantum circuit that is supported by Kiski. Also using this flux server approach, which but it's hosting on the cloud. So you can play it, and there's a lot of puzzle game that you can play to learn quantum computing. And also there's not just uh, one or two games. There's actually a lot of games that made with Kiski, and it's a kind of a subculture of Kiski. You can see all this game and you can click here, which I make an um, awesome quantum game uh, repo. You can see all of the, mostly all of the game that I know. Not all of them, maybe with Kiskit, but uh, quite a lot of, at least a recent year, 2020, 2019, they are made of Kiskit. But there's also some that are like quantum chess is not made with Kiskit. So you can see this will be a one stop to get some inspiration of what is out there uh, as quantum games. And yeah, and we also host some game jam with some uh, a quantum community in India. And you can also see here, it's already passed, but you can see some games there as well. Uh, so now it's my part of quantum journey. And I like to call it quantum, uh, random world to quantum computing and you'll see why in a second. So uh, I've only told you that about a game. I mean, from the time that I was making coupon, First, I will give, give you some background. Before Coupon, what happens in my career, what I was doing and what I uh, trying to do. So where well, early on in 2014, I was doing undergraduate and I get, into, I get interested in quantum computing and I wanted to apply for a PhD in uh, Singapore, which is uh, have a very famous quantum center called Security Center for Quantum Technology. I got in touch with professors and apply for a security uh, PhD program and the professor says, okay, but actually the admission is not controlled by professor and at the end I got rejected. And I was really demotivated uh, and I kind of wanted to give up. But one year later we have a summer school for quantum computing in Singapore with a lot of famous researchers. Uh, and then I took this two weeks intensive summer school and learned various topic of quantum information. And I really, really wanted to continue in trying to do more quantum computing research. So, uh, but I knew the reason why I got rejected for the first time because I have a material science background 
I don't know so much about physics. So I try to work with some professor and trying to work in a few months to work on quantum random work and to try to write some papers. And if we have papers, then we interest the chance of applying for a PhD. But after working a few months, I feel like uh, it's not so easy. It's not so easy to, to just like uh, spend a very short time and to, to make something novel enough to publish in the paper. So I kind of get demotivated again. And, and you can see that I already wanted to do PhD in 2015 and here we're doing 16. So it's like one year and a half of time that I was not, I was doing some research, but material science. So I feel maybe, maybe this is not for me. Uh, maybe I'm not good enough. Uh, so I, I gave up on quantum building again and I started a PhD in 2D materials like graphene, maybe you heard of, uh, which is more like my field in ex and also in experiment. So I wanted to do quantum information and in theory. So it's like a huge jump from what my background is. And, but I didn't quite give up because I managed to convince my supervisor in PhD that using 2D materials to make quantum building. Uh, so I read a lot of papers, like I think more than 200 papers, and then trying to find ideas that I can combine these two together. How can I make graphene or other 2D materials in the quantum building? It turns out there's some pretty, uh, quite a lot of research uh, in this direction, at least beginning to think about this, which is called topological quantum computing. You might heard about Marana, a bound state of Marana fermions. So um, we could, there's some proposal using some other materials and they have been uh, working on nano wires or uh, two deck uh, quantum well semiconductors. And we want to do similar thing, but using 2D materials and that could be a pretty decent uh, project proposal. And we wrote the proposal and we got the grant and it was not a small money. Uh, we got like 2.5 million US dollars. So it's a huge grant that we could start uh, yeah, buying equipments, hiring people and starting working on it. So, but that's where you see the experiment starting to fail. And, <laughs> and uh, you also our lab doesn't have the expertise in this area and quantum building and our equipments are not really designed to do this very sensitive measurement. Uh, if you see my profile photo in the first uh, we have a direct refrigerator, but we were doing just normal transport measurement. That is not so sensitive. And if you're familiar with, uh, if you see my picture below, um, if you want to do uh, the quantum information or qubits, there's a lot of other things that you need to take care of, not just a fridge. You need to make sure that it's cool enough, electron temperature low enough. You need to have uh, the control electronics uh, well, uh, make sure there are no noise It's also uh, filters and other thing, and even software, uh, the measurement you need, the coding, the right. So I was trying to do all these things and it was mostly me and just one, two other people. So you can imagine that is a really difficult task to build up a quantum team in a lab that doesn't have this expertise. So it become really demotivating. And that is when Cubon uh, happened. <laughs> so, uh, so I got an invitation. Actually, there was a researcher from IBM gave a talk in Singapore and the US, and I got to know about Kiskit and Kiskit Camp. And I was going to the APS March meeting, which is the biggest physics March meet, uh, meeting conference in the world. So I was going to US anyway, and Kiskit Camp was all just organized one week before that. So I was going to US anyway, I have my visa. So I just asked for the invitation to attend the Kiskit Camp. And then I went and I made coupon in 24 hours. And so this is the photo I showed you before. Uh, so it's a really fun experience. I hope we can do this again physically uh, very soon. And then soon after that, uh, my mentor, James Weaver, uh, has some events to do in Boston Museum of Science and of some uh, science outreach. And he asked me to post the game that I make in the Kiski camp and to make make it nicer and not just cranky like hackathon, like all hackathon projects. And so we add, post the game, we added like a um, menu, we added the difficulty level and the uh, end screen to make it just like a, a normal game. And then actually we have uh, one person managed to beat the game within one day. 
like there's a lot of people in this is our science fair a lot of people pass by and try the game and right before the exhibition closed there was one person uh beat the game and as i told you the end game says uh you achieve quantum supremacy and that was before google demonstrate so i say you demonstrate it first time in human history <laughs> so just a small joke in the game and uh yeah so here it is and that was actually almost exactly two years ago. And here is when I learned a lot about Python and how to use things in GitHub. And then I applied for internship uh, because I wanted to still continue quantum computing, but I never heard back from a local quantum computing company. As you can understand, because I was doing experiment and the experiment was not really working. And also, apart from that, I don't really have much uh, expertise in quantum uh, information or quantum computing. That I took a course in, in school, in grad school, but that's about it. I have no way to show that I understand quantum computing and, and it's good enough to apply for internship. So that might be a learning point that you can see later I'll bring up. But the coupon continues. So uh, in June, I was contacted by another P person in IBM who is uh, trying to make this cube, uh, quantum arcade machine. And he think that coupon might be a good game to put on there. So we work on it for three months. We will make coupon in Unity. And then is the time that I feel I really learning how to make games because you have a real game engine that can make commercial games. I learn a new programming language, C Sharp, which is used for Unity games. And also think more seriously about game design. And also very important is how I use Git. So before I know how to use GitHub, but it's mostly like one person. Version control is, is not so serious, but this time I were working with two other people in IBM and in different time zones. One is in Europe, one is in the US. So I learned how to do this kind of open source collaboration or team project collaboration using Git and doing a proper branching, uh, merging and all these things are proved very useful even to date. And then it continues while we are making uh, Coupon Arcade. Uh, Coupon was featured in the first uh, Coding with Kiskit YouTube series. This is the hugely popular YouTube series on Kiskit YouTube. Today's already up 91,000 views. So uh, you can go there to have a look. It's just a very short video. And it was the first episode as like a teaser for the whole series. So I feel really honored to be able to be featured there. Um, that was August 2019. And then after we, the arcade was finished, we have a tour in Europe starting from Kiski Camp Europe. And then there was this EU, EU quantum flagship exhibition in Finland. I think the machine also went to UK. So up to this point, you feel, I started to realize I spent so much time in the lab doing all these difficult experiments and and felt and I actually did a lot of things like I modified the fridge, make sure the cooling temperature is like the actual lowest record in my lab to make it like 30 millikelvin. I rewrote the measurement software and uh, nobody cares. So, but Cubon, I was making 24 hours and some polishing and maybe working continually. But it's still compared to my PhD, it's uh, quite a trivial work, but it seems to make some traction. At least people care. I mean, at least it's fun and people want to have fun. And even today, I'm using what I make coupon to tell you some story. So that is a point I realized that maybe there's a different career path that you can achieve. So the next thing I did was based on my Kiski Camp experience. And I really want to bring this experience to Singapore because not everyone can go to US. Uh, so in sometime in May, May 2019, I contacted the organizer at Kiski and trying to discuss with them whether we can do a small Kiski hackathon in Singapore. And as I mentioned in the beginning that there was no Kiski hackathon organized by university before. At that time, they were all organized by IBM. So we kind of started a new model of how it works. Uh, so we ex explore a lot of different things. And um, so we actually have IBM researchers and community members. I think we have seven IBM uh, coaches flew to 
uh, Singapore to support the event. So it was quite a small event, but it was quite uh, quite successful. People make a, had a lot of fun. Uh, it was like 50 people. So it's not like now that it's online, you have like 2000 people joining, but it was still cool and fun. And we, we and I met a lot of future colleagues. So that's also very important. And then uh, the next cool thing is, which is even more cool, is I got an invitation to CERN because of this uh, coupon feature encoding of Kiskit. So uh, in CERN, they're also trying to plan some quantum hackathon. And then uh, I don't know how the organizer discovered maybe encoding of Kiskit and they saw the coupon seems cool and he invited me. So everything, all expense paid flying to CERN. And as a physics uh, uh, student, you imagine how excited you'll be to visit this birthplace of Higgs boson. And you can see this CMS detector together with uh, Dr. James Wooten, which by the way, actually is the father of quantum games. So if you want to know more about quantum games, you search his name, you'll see a lot of talks, articles and game made by him. He made the first uh, computer game for quantum computers in 2016. Uh, so in this trip, I visited a lot of places, including IBM Research Zurich, and also made a lot of future colleagues. Uh, and it was just like uh, so exciting that I couldn't imagine you getting invited to here and have the chance of visiting this detector. And it's really, really cool experience. Usually you need a book like a few months in advance and maybe usually only a group tour like school can visit. But because they are organizing a hackathon for certain, all the participants could have a chance to go. And then in October in 2019, I become the first Kiskit Advocate. So Kiskit Advocate is a bunch of people that are very active in the Kiskit community. And I was among the first batch. And it's a very tight and very active community that we know each other like friends. And so actually in December this year, 2019, I met another Kiski advocate in Spain when I went there for Christmas. And I make a, a lot of other friends. These are just a few names I want to shout out and you can see the link to their Twitter profile. And actually I want to take this moment to advertise a little bit about Kiski advocate program because actually to date now I'm leading the program. I was the Kiski advocate. Now I'm inside IBM uh, leading the program and trying to recruit more Kiski advocate. And so as I explained, the Kiske Advocate are the most active <clears throat> member of the Kiske community. And if you join this program, you have chances of networking with more experts and enthusiasts. Uh, you also have access to Kiske core members like the developers and projects. And you will get invitation to events like digital or physical when COVID finished. Uh, and here is uh, your famous, uh, your familiar face, Santanu. Uh, he's the founder of UQC and also organizer QC Hack. And he's one of the advocate, one of the fine example of our advocate. So now we have about 200 people across 30 different country of Kiske advocate. And recently we have, we run a mentorship program, which you have a chance of working with IBM quantum expert on a three month project to a bit like what I make in Coupon Arcade, that you work with someone that is very experienced, a software developer, a quantum software developer, or a researcher on some project. And through this experience, you develop your coding skill or your quantum uh, knowledge. And more importantly, you build a meaningful connection. You see, I get to know the IBMers. I understand how the company works and then to, to explore other things. And through my mentor, like uh, Jim Weaver, I also can go talk to a lot of different people and eventually got my job was also uh, through this mentor that I have. So the Kiske Advocate, I think is a great chance for you uh, to get into a more uh, closer relationship with the, a very active community, a smaller community and also IBMers. So the application will open this year in June. So if you're interested, you can sign up in this link just kiss dot it have a kit uh, to sign up when we will send you some more information how to apply and and, and uh, when you the application opens. So that was the advertisement time. <laughs> so then the last step of my this uh, random walk journey is that I joined IBM Quantum and this is beyond the chart because career high cannot be measured within the screen. Uh, 
uh, I couldn't imagine that I got this job. But just one year after making coupon, I joined IBM. And my career completely changed. And that is the story and the moral of the story I want to tell you is before I joined the Kids Cam, all my idea of quantum computing is to become a researcher. I wanted to be an experimental researcher, make qubits, make quantum computers. And that is great. I'm not saying this is not a, a career path to uh, pursue. It's just that it's so difficult. It requires you to know so many things, both in knowledge and also experimental skill and sometimes luck. Uh, and you may not have the resources in your country or in your university to do this. Like my lab didn't have this expertise and it'll be pretty difficult. So my story is just to tell you that there's many other jobs that you could do ranging from researcher to maybe software developer or engineer or educator or maybe even classical developer that you don't need to do anything quantum, but you still support like our community events or just building kisskid.org website. They are all very useful and meaningful contribution to a community. Uh, can be even a technical writer. Our writer Ryan is, has done a lot of great job of writing a lot of blog posts and Kiske Medium now is really active and even human resources and helping to recruit the best talents for the company or for, for the whole industry and training them. So I just want to make sure that you, you are aware of this kind of possibility to join a quantum industry, not just the most obvious one, researcher and developer. And also now everything is so active online, you can be active in community and make contribution, giving talks, making open source contribution to software, maybe join the Kiskit Advocate program. And also this is very important and looks trivial. Make yourself very visible on Twitter and LinkedIn. And that helped me a lot because you might do a lot of things, but people don't know, then they wouldn't, when there's something they wouldn't think of you. But if you are very active, then you, they will think of you if they have a position open or things like that. And those are not the only examples. So I'm just showing you a list of examples that it, it's young generation like me that have done something in the community and now is doing various either full-time position or internship or co-op position in the industry. So I, I do think that this model works that you should contribute to community and active making hackathon project, teaching people quantum computing, and that will maybe land you a job in the, in the industry. So the last slide I want to show is just this, uh, you can see various links of Kiskit and also some educational or career resources in IBM. Especially this one is interesting. Basically what I say, there's many different jobs in the industry and this goes into more detail. And Kiskit Advocate Program. And then if in your country, maybe US, Europe and Japan, we also have internship program that you can look at. So with that, I finished my talk for today. Is there any questions? So I finish on time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, yes, um, a, a, a big thank you to our wonderful speaker, um, Junye Huang. Um, th this this was such an engaging, informative talk, and I think judging by the chat, I think our audience really got um, a lot out of it. Um, it's great. Does anybody have some final questions for Junye in the chat? Um, and in the meantime, I know that I have some questions. Um, mm -hmm. Just, just I, I was just wondering, like, with all the cool project, you know, projects you've done in in the past, and like all the places you have taken coupon to, I was just curious as to um, what you're, um, what 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 you're working on right now. If you have any um, uh, current projects. Yeah. So actually, after I joined my, uh, <laughs> after I joined IBM, I haven't worked on coupon so much or uh, games. Actually, every time when I have some hackathon, I will try to work with. So you see the Pico 8 uh, version was made with in a hackathon in Taiwan with a team. Oh, cool. So because actually my full-time job now, it doesn't make game. I do uh, organize events, give talks like now, uh, organizing in Singapore. Uh, so actually they don't, don't have that much time making games, but whenever I have a chance uh, in some hackathon, I become mentors and I will, I will make some games. Right now, I'm also working with some students in NUS there for the National University of Singapore to make some new quantum games. Uh, hopefully, I will be able to share with you next time in a few months' time. 
Very cool. Very cool. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, one person is asking in the chat um, just uh, about the criteria to become a, um, a, a Kiskit advocate. That's a good question. Uh, I should make it clear. Uh, so basically, you we want there's a few things you will do. Uh, you need to pass the test, and you need to also submit your contributions. And the contribution can be open source contribution to Kiskit, can be Kiskit code or Kiskit contents, me, like textbook or tutorial, or it could be uh, community contribution like events like Santanu. He organized a hackathon like this big, and is a huge contribution. And uh, or you give a talk, so the contribution will be varies. Like we have some some kind of kind of like. This might be bigger. This will like you start a quantum computing club like Santanu, then it's a big thing. Uh, if you give a talk, then it will be a I mean just a normal talk, then it will be just a smaller contribution. But they are all contributing. You can also do translating uh Kiski documentation to um uh, to your native language, then it's also a contribution. So uh, if you sign up here, I'm preparing an application guide with a lot more details about what kind of contribution you can make and what kind of contribution we think is more valuable. Like the open source contribution would be valuable. Like you make Kiskit better. Uh, or you start a community in your country, in your university, a Kiskit club, that would be really, really important contributions. Yeah, but that's a very good question. Uh, you sign up here and then we'll send you an email with the application guide, you come out in the next few weeks. Perfect, perfect. Um, let's see, I just have um, one last question here. Um, and, 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 and that's just like, um, to you, um, what is the importance of games in quantum education? Uh, actually, I could ask you, why do you think this thought was interesting? Why do you want to join? So I think game, <laughs> game is important in the sense that it is, not just for quantum, I think it's a quite general thing that people are very interested in. And so, at least for the beginning, I think it's not such a good tool for you to teaching something deeper. But for example, like this one is actually very popular for Minecraft. Uh, we have done a lot of events, especially young kids now, they're familiar with Minecraft. Uh, while coupon is like very old school. So I think, like, I think that line was good. Using, exploring unfamiliar, a concept using familiar setting, making some similar game that people are familiar, the environment familiar, then to teach something that they are not familiar, they are easy to take in, rather than you take a course or videos. I think at first, like from getting people interested in quantum computing or to grasp the basic concept like superstition, entanglement, or measurement, I think games are very valuable. But beyond that might be a question mark. If you already know the basics, uh, does it really help you to understand? Maybe not, maybe harder to make a game to do this, but just for more general audience to get their first interest, I think games are really, really awesome. Much better than anything that you can have out there. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, uh, 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 a lot of very good points in there. Um, that's unfortunately all the time we have for today. Um, if you joined us in the middle of, of Junior's talk or um, couldn't stay for the whole time, a recording will be available um, on the Quantum Coalition Twitch channel. Um, a big, big thank you again to Junior for this amazing talk um, and to all of our viewers for coming in, um, and having such um, interesting questions. Um, we will see you tomorrow and have a good night. Yeah, thank you very much for joining for the talk. Uh, yeah, see you on the Discord channel.